So you want to build yourself a PC and you're wondering what's the best PC I can build for my budget. We have done the $1,000 build and the $1,500 build and now it's time to do the $2,500 build. And believe me, for that budget you can get something absolutely amazing. Let's go right after this. Looking for a cheap way to license your windows? Check out who keys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out whokeys.com in the video description below. So then if your budget is less than two and a half thousand, I highly recommend you check out the 1500 and thousand dollar build videos because your budget is roughly there in fact the $1,500 build is right here and I'm recording this video on this and we're gonna like kind of jump up from here now by the way if your budget is two and a half thousand dollars you're gonna get amazing PC well done for saving that amount and I'm also gonna give you a few options if you have a little bit of wiggle room in your budget like a little bit more a little bit less so you can decide like you know which is more important for you also in the end of the video I might have a surprise for you if you can spare extra hundred dollars you might get a pretty good update or upgrade for your PC. Usually we start with some CPUs and stuff but this time I want to start with a case and this case that we built inside here is really good for the budget you can't really get nothing much else. Corsair 4000D Airflow by the way everything that I'm talking about are in the description below if you want to pick any of these up or upgrade you know compare prices or the latest pricing then check out the description below you can get it in black or white versions or variants and for 81 dollars at the moment here in this price we can't really you know beat this but if you can spare a little bit on your budget then i'd highly recommend the corsair 5000d just because then all the uh, components that i'm going to recommend aren't so crammed inside and you have a little bit more breathing room and a bit more airflow for the 5000d because you can add more fans on the 5000d but anyway both of them are linked below for the processor now we're going intel i7 12700k why not ryzen i personally think if you're a creator intel for that price range at the moment offers a little bit of a better performance and the igpu inside those 12 gen chips just offers a lot more than what Ryzen can offer, especially if you're editing video and using mirrorless camera codecs, that's H.264 and H.265. 12 core processor, absolutely amazing, amazing processor. For the motherboard, I am highly recommend the Gigabyte Z690 Aero G DDR4 version. That's the same motherboard we have in this build and this is the best motherboard you can have for 12th gen that has DDR4. There's no other DDR4 motherboards that is as good for you as a creator. There's lots of fast USB connectivity ports and four M.2 slots, all of them gen 4 speeds, so you've got lots of options over there. I highly recommend you check out my review on this, but at the moment I can see this on a deal as well, so it's a little bit cheaper, so I highly recommend you check that video out. Now for cooling, you could go with an air cooler like this one, Arctic Freezer 34 that we use in this one, and on my 12900K, which pulls even more power it was able to cool it down and it was like around 90 degrees or lower 90 degrees there so if you're really on a budget i highly recommend this arctic freezer 34 esports duo because for the budget it it's amazing but now because your budget is a little bit higher i recommend a little bit of a different cooler the arctic liquid freezer 360 2 or liquid freezer 2 360 millimeter so basically it's an AIO and it gives you a little bit of a quieter performance and then all the bursts in the like higher wattage if you're using the 12700k this cooler can just observe them a little bit better and just not going to ramp them up as high and so on so this is basically the best liquid cooler you can have on the market at the moment and it is so flipping affordable for $111 check it out in the description below just another little note I want to add here is that if you want to put this cooler inside this 400d case then you might have a little bit of a tight squeeze for the front because the radiator is actually very thick with the fans as well you might have to lose like one fan on the bottom or something like that if you want to you know mount it over there or it might fit just depending which gpu you're going to go for as well it might be a bit of a squeeze so if you can i'd recommend you know cashing out extra $50 or a little bit more to go with the Corsair 5000D bigger case and then you don't have 
a problem like that. I've used that cooler for the 5000D, you know, no problem mounting it on the top. You could mount it in the front as well, but I wanted to use it on the top. Feel free to check that build out if you want to see that. But this kind of ensures that our CPU is cooled very, very nicely. Next of all, the SSDs. And our motherboard has four M.2 slots, and you can have all of them PCI Gen 4 speeds like super fast drives. Now, for this budget, I'm kind of recommending you one, just one terabyte uh, OS drive, because I'm not sure what you know PC you're running before or if you just you know wanting to shell out all of this for this build or you have some previous parts the thing is you have to really see for your workflow how many like project and you know other drives you need for but I'm going to give you just the actual OS drive I'm going to recommend the team group T-Force Cadia Zero Z440 drive it's one terabyte in size super fast in terms of like speed sequential read and write speeds roughly around 4.5 to 5 gigabytes per second and if you want you can get another one for your projects or get a two terabyte version for the projects very very good drive for that price really hard to beat but i'm gonna leave a few options in the description below just in case you think you know what i want a little bit of faster drive or i want the secondary drive or i'm gonna check the prices of competitors you can check them out in the description below because some few other options are like this samsung 980 pro i know it's about 20 30 dollars more expensive but the read and write speeds on this drive are up to 7,000 megabytes per second which is much much you know higher but depends on the deal you might get this might be worth it as well or if you want the secondary drive you know to be this then that's an option as well also crucial p5 plus at the moment i'm looking is about three dollars more expensive but the read and write speeds are up to 6.5 gigabytes or 6.6 .6 gigabytes per second which is you know a lot more for three dollars so you might want to go for this one i'm going to leave both of them or all of them in the description below and you decide you know I want this for my project drive, this for my OS drive, but you can populate all of them on your motherboard basically. And another project drive option if you want two terabyte version, which I'm actually using in this build over here as well, is the silicon power two terabyte NVMe. This is the US 70 drive, which basically is the most affordable PCA Gen 4 drive for PCs. So you got super fast speeds and two terabytes in size. If you look at this, one terabyte only costs you $105, which is really, really cheap compared to the previous drive I just recommended. But the read and write speeds are basically the same. But how many drives you want in your system is optional. You just need one for sure, but then all the other ones are an optional upgrades. Linked below, by the way. Now for RAM. For this budget, I think you can easily afford 64 gigabytes of RAM. And I don't think you really need to go any less because that's really going to give you lots of breathing room as a creator. By the way, if you want to upgrade this amount to 128 gigabytes, just buy two sets of these and slot them into the four slots on your motherboard. But if you just want 64 gigabytes, use two sticks. So for the most affordable option, I'd go really with this Team Groove T-Force Vulcan Z uh, DDR4. And this is 64 gigabytes kit, 3600 megahertz RAM. It's a few percent faster than the 3200 megahertz RAM, but it kind of fits with this kind of gray theme on the motherboard as well. But if you have extra few, you know, dollars to spare, then check out these RAMs over here. RAMs. RAM sticks. This is $287, okay? So maybe extra $10 more, but you can get RGB and white, which I think looks very, very like appealing to me. If you are caring what your PC looks like, this will slot into your theme very well and is not a lot more expensive. The specs are the same, 3600 megahertz, 64 gigabytes and CL18. And another option here is this Team Group T-Force Delta RGB. Same specs, but just a few different versions of the RAM. They're all within like $15 of each other. So it depends what deal you're getting. Also, the links in below are smart links. So when you click on them, it gives you an option. You know, do you want Amazon, Best Buy, Newegg, b &H or something like that? Click on all of them, just so you know, then you're gonna get the best price and you know, buy it from that shop basically. Now things get exciting and the GPU. For this two and a half thousand dollar budget, you can afford quite a good GPU. Now looking at here, we can see that the Zotac Gaming RTX 3070 Ti is less than thousand dollars. And at the moment, the GPU prices are going down. So I highly recommend you like keep up with the prices through the links below so you can see like, you know, if the GPU prices have changed, but looks like they're going down but they're changing like daily. So always check the latest pricing through the links below. But I can see that 3070 Ti can easily fit in your budget if you want to keep within the two and a half 
thousand dollar budget and there's few options available over here i can see another 3070 ti over here this is a little bit more expensive but if you just search 3070 ti they're roughly around thousand dollars you can see here uh, msi ventus over here this is a little bit more expensive few zotax over here as you can see look gigabyte gaming 3070 looks like it's going to be just around thousand dollars which is very very good news and it's a very very good gpu especially if you're video editing or do some rendering or 3d modeling where you know the cuda score or the rtx ray tracing is very important for you then these gpus can actually utilize that very very well but hey I said that there's a little bit of a surprise. Now, if you are not so tight on the two and a half thousand dollar budget, I highly recommend you check out some of the pricing for RTX 3080. Now, this is quite a bit of an upgrade from 3070, just because also the VRAM is gonna go from eight gigabytes to 10 gigabytes or 12 gigabytes. Check out this deal that I found here on Newegg. This is MSI Ventus and 1380, and this is just like a hundred dollars more and this is quite a big of a jump between RTX 3070, 3070 Ti to this one. Especially as a creator, if you're doing anything GPU heavy, you know, whether it's modeling, Blender, DaVinci Resolve, or even Premiere Pro, depends, you know, how much editing and how much effects you're using. You might be able to squeeze that into your budget if you are around uh, 2600 or 2700 this would be a really really good buy i'm going to leave a few options in the description below if you want to do that that would be absolutely amazing and i can't believe really that we're seeing these prices here if it is above 1300 for the 3080 i wouldn't really go for that and i'd stick with the 3070 because the price difference now is massive so i wouldn't go for that but looking at the moment, this is quite amazing. And the last thing you need is a PSU. And really for that, I'd recommend the Corsair RM850X. It's really hard to beat that price and for $114. 850 watts will be enough to power even the RTX 3080 in your system. So definitely worth checking that out. So now the price for this build, depending which part you chose, because I gave you a few options, a few wiggle room, you know, which part you want to go and like just look at your budget, really see what you want. Do you want to save a little bit here and there? If you go with some of the like lowest recommendations, then this price is going to go according to what I showed you just now and what I calculated just now is below two and a half thousand dollars. So if you want to go with this cooler over here and the RTX 3070 Ti and just one SSD, then it's going to be like somewhere between 2400 and 2500 budget range. If you want to shell out for the higher cooler and maybe 3080 and maybe if you are SSDs, then your budget is going to be more likely between two and a half to three thousand dollars. But this is really, really good system. And honestly, if you're going to buy it, it makes me jealous because it's going to be better than my current rig that I'm using over there. Nothing more to say, except if you're a photographer and you're not bothered about gaming and video editing, really take all the budget off your GPU and put it more on the CPU and some other storage and other things because that GPU is a massive overkill for you. But all the links are in the description below if you want to pick any of those up. If you're wondering how to build this PC or how to configure the software, check out the build video for this PC and the software configuration because you can literally follow that I know your CPU is going to be a little bit different, but all the installation is going to be still the same. All the things are going to plug in exactly the same places, but your GPU might be a little bit different. That's all. Just very highly recommend you check them out. Very easy to follow, hour long things, so you can really go step by step and build your PC and really configure it to your workflow. As always, likes if you enjoyed it, subs if you like to see more, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.